Hello friends, this is Peaceful Anarchism on the Voluntary Virtues Network every Thursday afternoon, 1 p.m. to 1.30 p.m. I'm your host, Danilo Cuellar, and today we'll be discussing how the minimum wage causes more unemployment, more poverty, and the formation of gang violence, encouragement of gang violence. So this is from my recent blog post on the recent minimum wage um, proposal in the Washington State ballot. A bill is currently attempting to be passed in Washington to enact a statewide minimum wage of $15. This is sparking a lively discussion on the topic since it would effectively double the current federal minimum wage of $7.50. Proponents of the minimum wage say this is necessary in order to keep up with inflation. They assert, we need to get paid a living wage. The inconsistencies with the minimum wage reasoning are fourfold. The first is that all employees will be receiving this new and improved wage. The second is that wealth is created at a whim by political decree. The third is that dubious definition of the term, quote, living wage. The fourth is that inflation is a natural motion of a healthy economy. The very existence of the minimum wage presupposes the erroneous notion that were it not for politicians, we would all be making $1 per hour because, quote, greedy capitalists, end quote, could pay their employees any arbitrary amount of currency. The reality is all businesses exist in direct and indirect competition with other businesses over the acquisition of labor. It is this competition that determines the apropos market value of labor, not the, quote, greedy capitalists. It all boils down to skills. If you possess more skills, you will get paid more as your value to the company is proportionately enhanced. Minimum wage laws only disrupt this natural self-correcting mechanism by introducing force and violence into an otherwise peaceful agreement between employer and employee. If a worker is making the current minimum wage of $7.50 per hour and is producing $10 per hour of value to the company, this equates to $2.50 per hour of profit for the company. If the new $15 minimum wage law is enacted, this significantly changes the dynamics. Now the employer is forced to pay his employee $15 per hour. However, this employee is still only producing $10 per hour of value. This equates to a net loss of $5 per hour for the company. In order to stay in business, the employer must either appreciably reduce his hours or fire him. If not, then he will eventually go out of business. Businesses operate to make currency, not lose it. The definition of inflation is an increase in the money supply. This can be through the mining of precious metals in, in a gold-silver-based economy, through the efforts of the small-scale amateur basement counterfeiter, or through the massive legal counterfeit operations of a central bank, a.k.a. the mandrake mechanism, increasing the currency supply or currency creation. The destructive repercussions of the first two are negligible in comparison to the elephantine effects of the latter. The colossal currency creation of the Federal Reserve or legal plunder is the real culprit for the distortions in the, in the economy that produces the boom-bust cycles and has caused the Great Depression. Inflation is a symptom of a hijacked economy by a fascistic group of elite bankers. It is antithetical to a healthy free market economy. After all this, we must conclude that it is not the politicians that create wealth. Rather, it is the multitude of workers and business owners who daily toil to create and innovate the products we cherish. Writing down a command on a piece of paper and then backing it with a gun does not ensure anything but unemployment, job displacement, poverty, and increased state dependency. Understand that politicians have never given anything to the people that they did not already possess. Everything, quote, government, 
says is a lie and everything it gives was first stolen from someone else. Never forget that. And I'll end for, with a quote from Thomas Sowell, a uh, pretty famous um, Austrian economist from his book, Basic Econ Economics, A Citizen's, Citizen's Guide to the Economy. Quote, Unfortunately, the real minimum wage is always zero, regardless of the laws, and that is the wage that many workers receive in the wake of the creation or escalation of a government-mandated minimum wage, because they lose their jobs or fail to find jobs when they enter the, the labor force. Making it illegal to pay less than a given amount does not make a worker's productivity worth that amount. And if it is not, that worker is unlikely to be employed. So, the minimum wage. Let's discuss this for, uh, for a moment. So now, what we have to consider when we're talking about minimum wage is... What is, the, what is the government trying to do? They're, what they're essentially saying is that politicians, at a whim, can create wealth. That if they see a particular injustice, if they believe one class of people to be making more or less than what they, quote, should be making, they feel they have the prerogative, right, the privilege to intervene with their laws and mandates and regulations which um, more accurately described would be threats and commands similar to the way a mafia would issue threats and commands um, so that is the erroneous notion that government actually creates wealth right this is this is the problem this is the way that we've been all brought up to believe uh, going to going to school in our in our government um, in our government indoctrination camps, the public schools, you know, we, we've been brought up to believe that, that the government is our patriarch, right? Is our savior, is our, um, is family, right? Uncle Sam, you know, he's, he's told that we're family. So if there's any injustice, what we would consider to be injustice, um, then government should have the answer. Well, well, we're now beginning to understand that this is not the case, okay? Wealth is not created from the top down. Wealth is only created from the bottom up, okay? Kings, monarchs, ar ar aristocrats, oligarchs, politicians, dukes, prime ministers do not create wealth. All they do is ensure that life will be that much more difficult for those people who are creating wealth, who are working their very best to create new things, to, to invent new ideas and new, uh, new machines to improve our lives, right? And improve the efficiency of our work, you know? So in the end, that's basically all these laws ever accomplish. So, so specifically with the minimum wage, it's, it's basically what we would consider wage control. Right? They're, they're establishing a floor and they're basically saying to, to all employers, you cannot hire people and pay them less than this arbitrary amount, whatever they, whatever they say. Um, and this whole minimum wage thing uh, began in, I, I believe it was the 1920s. Um, and actually, incidentally, at that time, the blacks were actually um, paid quite well. And, and the unemployment was actually going down, right? And, uh, you know, comparing that to today, blacks, blacks and other minorities, uh, you know, uh, single mothers and, you know, Hispanics are among the, um, are most often the groups that are, that suffer during, you know, at, at state dependency, at welfare, at, um, um, you know, at, uh, they, they just... They, they, they wallow in this pit of state dependency that they just can't seem to climb themselves out of. And like, you know, like a drug, like morphine, like cocaine, like heroin, you know, you, you get a hit and it feels good and you want more and you want more, right? And you want more. 
And so it kind of breeds, um, it breeds sloth, okay? It breeds indolence, okay? It destroys the incentive to create, to, to innovate, okay? It destroys the incentive to improve oneself, all right? So this is what, this is what welfare does to a society. And, and of course, you know, once it begins, just like government, it expands, 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 and until, you know, there's a, a top-down collapse because uh, you just can't have a government that's continuing to expand while the middle class that is supporting it, right, through its um, uh, stolen funds, known as taxation, as well as the um, uh, fiat creation, which is, uh, you know, borrowing, borrowing um, from the unborn through, you know, stealing the prosperity of the unborn, this cannot continue indefinitely, okay? That which mathematically cannot continue will not continue, okay? And the welfare state is that which cannot continue, all right? And all minimum wage is doing is ensuring a permanent underclass, okay? A permanent class of people completely and utterly dependent on government for their subsistence in terms of food, in terms of healthcare, in terms of housing, in terms of schooling even. <laughs> you know, how many people go to college with, with federal loans, okay? Uh, which is what was basically, incidentally, one of the reasons why um, going to college, the, the, the tuition is so astronomically high, right? It is subsidized by, in large part, the federal government, okay? And as an institution, if you know your revenue will be secured by the state, then you don't have to worry about, you know, low tuition, you don't have to worry about competition, you don't have to worry about pleasing the customer, because regardless, they can always get a federal loan and they will go to college, right? Uh, regardless if they can pay it back, regardless if they have the intellectual capacity to, um, to actually learn the material, it, sometimes they can't, people, some people can't even prove that they can learn the material and most people drop out, but they have taken out these enormous uh, federal loans um, that uh, just contribute to the uh, <laughs> contribute to the national debt, con contribute to student debt, um, and uh, just bogs down the economy. So, so, um, so yeah, the, the, the minimum wage, it's, it's not reflective of reality, okay? So, so it's, it's wage control, first off, right? So, so the government thinks that they can, they can somehow <laughs> take everybody who's making, who's working now and making whatever the minimum wage is now, right, seven fifty or whatever, $80, and bring them all up to $15, right? Now, first of all, if the government actually could do that, right? If some magic way <laughs> everybody would be making $15, what do you think would happen to the prices of commodities, the prices of food, of gasoline, of oil, right? What do you think would happen to, the, to prices if everybody all of a sudden is making more, right? Um, equally. What do you think would happen? Of course, everything would go up naturally, right? This is, this is what happens. This is an increase in the money supply, increase in the currency supply. Therefore, it must follow with an increase in prices. It's natural and it's necessary. And so therefore, <laughs> what was the result of that? If everybody all of a sudden made 15, however, the prices um, concomitantly also increased, it negates the effect. There is no effect, right? And the only effect is um, you're hastening that much more the path towards the wealth transfer or economic collapse, right? Because um, again, inflation and money creation, borrowing and the future prosperity of the unborn, that's also another thing that, you know, it just, it can't happen indefinitely just as a welfare state. So, so, um, so yeah, so minimum wage is wage control, right? So, and, and another thing it is, it, it interferes in the peaceful agreement between two people, right? So if you were to have somebody come over and mow your lawn, right? And they say, I'll mow your lawn for, I don't know, $20 or something, $30, right? And however long it takes, right? Now, if that's below the minimum wage, that would technically be an illegal transaction, 
right? But what is the what is the problem with that? There is no victim. See, here's the here's the problem with all laws, okay? All government laws, right? There when there is no victim, there is no crime. Okay? This is a very simple concept. No victim, no crime, right? So a peaceful transaction between two people in which they make an agreement as to one person contributes labor, time, and the other person contributes monet monetary value, right? Exchanges that labor and time for monetary value. So both people benefit, right? Both benefit. That's the nature of capitalism. That's the nature of peaceful transactions. Everybody benefits, you know. The man with the money values the labor more than his money. Therefore, he, he, he would want to exchange um, that labor for his money. And conversely, the man, with the, the man who's offering his labor values the money more than his labor. Therefore, it's a win-win situation, right? Everybody wins. This is, this is called the free market economy. Everybody wins. This is peaceful, peaceful anarchism right here without government no no need for government in a peaceful transaction it's completely irrelevant okay government is completely irrelevant in this situation actually in all situations but specifically <laughs> specifically in this situation right so no victim no crime okay now now you have some um, self-righteous uh, do-gooders that come in and say well if we if we didn't have a minimum wage you know People would be paying whatever to their to their employees, right? <laughs> they would be paying a dollar, two dollars an hour. Okay, now that's that may be true. Some people may want to work for a dollar or two dollars an hour. Now, if a person voluntarily engages in an agreement where they know they're going to get a dollar or two dollars an hour, again, where is the crime and who is the victim? Okay, we are all adults. Okay, we all have minds. Okay, so we are capable to make our own decisions on these matters. Okay, so you have to allow people to have the autonomy to make their own decisions. Okay, so if a person says, I will work for a dollar an hour, right? It may not be a very specialized work. I don't know what it may, I don't know what it would be picking up garbage, whatever. I don't know, but obviously. This transaction is the best possible option for this person, right? If they, if they know they could make $5 an hour doing something else, then they would do that, okay? They wouldn't opt to make a dollar an hour if they had better options, right? So obviously, that kind of person, most likely, probably, let's say it would be probably a homeless person maybe, or, you know, or someone unemployed, um, they know that they can't get a better deal and so that is the best possible deal so what's what's the problem where's the crime there is no crime <laughs> there is there is no problem it's again it's a win-win situation right as long as the person is not being forced or has not been deceived or defrauded okay then there is no problem okay and um and another thing is, you know, people say, well, we have to pay them a living wage. Okay, <laughs> now, please explain to me what a living wage is, okay? Because I don't understand what that phrase means. It, it has the same obscure uh, connotation that, you know, social justice, you know, has, or structural violence, or these ridiculous phrases that, that people say, uh, to describe very simple and clear concepts such as justice and violence, okay? So a living wage does not make sense, all right? So you ha what, what is a living wage for Bill Gates and Steve Jobs is very different from what's a living wage for a homeless guy in New York City, okay? <laughs> Obviously, that homeless guy is not expecting to make what Steve Jobs and Bill Gates are making, right? He just wants to survive. He just wants to have enough to eat. He just wants to have enough for some shelter, right? Maybe a cardboard box is sufficient for him, right? So he is willing to do work, whatever that takes, okay? Whatever it takes. 
And by telling him through these laws, through these minimum wage laws, no, you can't work for $2 an hour. You're being exploited. <laughs> That's a slap in the face to him, okay? You're going to keep him unemployed, jobless, and on the streets because you say he's getting exploited. Now, that, that does not make sense, okay? The man or anybody like that who is willing to work for those wages should be allowed to work. There is no crime. There is no problem. There is no victim, all right? So, so another, uh, so, so basically a living wage is, uh, is a very uh, ridiculous concept, okay? <laughs> We're all different. We all have different requirements for living. <laughs> and, and so you can't, you can't, you know, specifically de de define what a living wage is. Very ridiculous concept, okay? And then other people say, well, we got to keep up with inflation. Now, what the hell does that mean, okay? I don't, I don't understand keeping up with inflation, you know? Okay, first of all, in all this talk, Nobody is mentioning skills, all right? Nobody mentions, you know, <laughs> you know, when you, when, you talk about, when you talk about employment and, um, you know, em employment laws, right, or, or wage laws, you have to talk about skills, all right? That's entirely um, dependent on someone's skills. The type of job that they take is entirely dependent on skills, right? So if, if a man is working for two dollars an hour obviously he doesn't have enough he doesn't have many skills obviously right now he can choose to stay working for two dollars an hour for the rest of his life and that would be his choice right but then again don't go crying to any patriarchal organization criminal mafia like the federal government or any government to try to pay you more money when you have not earned it Okay, ask Bill Gates and Steve Jobs if they were if they would have asked government to pay them more without having developed their the products that they developed without having uh, innovated without having created the the beauty and improved the lives of everyone through their products right that would be ridiculous okay most rich people I would say. There, there's, you know, there's a, there's a, you know, when you just say rich people, you have to differentiate the rich, um, the rich connected, politically connected, the cronies, the lobbyists, all those people, okay? This is a class of rich people that are more like akin to parasites, right? Leeches, okay? Ticks, <laughs> okay? And they are leeching off of the mother leech, which is the federal government, <laughs> <laughs> all right, so that's one class of rich people. All right, and they basically uh, maintain their elite status through uh, through coercion, through deception, through fraud. Okay, through criminality. Um, also, you know they and and you know the 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 federal government uses what's called sovereign immunity, which means any criminality they they employ is all of a sudden deemed to be um, correct. Because it's legal, right? Whereas it's kind of strange in that they're the organization that creates the law, so of course everything they, they do is going to be legal, right? Which is ridiculous. So legality is scarcely the yardstick that you want to use to measure anything, okay? That's, that's the first thing, okay? You, you just have to realize, you know, the Holocaust was legal, okay? The great, move, the great leap forward was legal. Ma Mao's communist uh, purge was legal. Stalin's, Stalin's genocide, legal. Pol Pot, le <laughs> all the genocide that you can name of every tyrant or dictator in history was legal, was carried out under law by men working for the government, okay? Men just doing their jobs, okay? So legal is not a yardstick for morality, okay? They are opposite poles, okay? They are diametrically opposed. So. So you have the rich cronies, the politically connected, and then you have the rich that have gained that wealth through, again, innovation, hard work, investing, taking much risk. That's, that's the whole idea of business, is taking risk, okay? Um, you know, people who, people who get their wealth through um, political connections, through uh, lobbying, through um, rent-seeking, are not getting their wealth through risk, okay, whatsoever, okay? Those are the type of corporations that get bailouts, all right? And when you have a bailout, 
you have eliminated all risk, okay, for failure, right? You have the uh, CFE institutions called the uh, systemically, um, systemically important financial institutions known as, you know, the, uh, the big banks, right? Chase, Bank of America, Capital One, Citigroup, Wells Fargo, those kind of banks. Um, you know, these, this, is the, this is the politically connected in the financial sector, right? They have eliminated all risk. And you can see this with the bailouts. The bailouts right after the housing crisis um, in 2008, right? The uh, bailouts is just, it's just a fancy word for more theft of um, the stolen funds acquired through taxation and fiat currency creation, right? Stealing the prosperity of the unborn. So, so the, the rich that have gained their wealth through legitimate means, okay, through hard work, through innovation, through creating, to, through, through imagination. These are the people that we should cherish. These, this is what we should strive for. This is the incentive to start a business, to create, and to excel, okay? So these are the people we should look up to. We should not, we should not steal more from them. <laughs> you, know, we, you know, people are saying, tax the rich. They're the problem in the society. Well, first of all, you have to define rich. You have to define, you know, how they got their wealth. But, you know, just a blanket statement, tax the rich, is like saying all black people are, you know, are horrible or evil. All black people are, you know, I don't know, thieves. All, all white people are, uh, I don't know, <laughs> privileged, you know, whatever. It's, these, these blanket statements mean nothing, okay? It's like calling, it's like feminism, feminist, racist, state, sexist. They mean nothing. <laughs> they absolutely do. You cannot give blanket statements like that. So, so there are rich people that have gained their wealth through legitimate means. And these are the types of people that we should cherish. Okay? And minimum wage laws, just, they don't take into account, they don't take into account these, um, these, these just, these kind of people. This is what, we should strive for, okay? So, so, just remember this. Wealth does not come from the top. Wealth comes from the bottom. Wealth comes from the people every day, the people like you and me, the people who are working, contributing value in society, okay? Actually, I can talk about one more point before I go, um, is the market value of labor, right? Everybody, everybody's labor has market value. That goes back to skills, whatever skills you have, you have more skills, you have more value, you should get paid more, right? That's just the thing. So, so th there are people that are paid, you know, $20 an hour, right? Because they have more skills than somebody who would get paid minimum wage, $7.50, right? Um, so, so they wouldn't get, they wouldn't be really scared of a minimum wage hike to $15. However, uh, you know, here's another, here's another interesting assertion is that if minimum wage actually did create wealth, why are they going to stop at $15? Why not increase it to $50, $100, $500, $500? Why not increase it? Wouldn't that make more wealth? <laughs> For the same reason that printing more money does not bring more wealth. Okay? For the same reason, these are all, they're all predicated on the same notion that politicians can create wealth at a pen stroke. All right? by the magic of their ink, okay? By the black magic <laughs> of their actions. And this is complete folly and absurdity. And we have to grow up, okay? And snap out of it and stop depending on these ridiculous laws that only further hinder people's progress, all right? If you wanna make more money, read books, educate yourself, learn new things, okay? Learn new skills. This is how you make more money. This is how you contribute to society it's not just about making money okay it's about it's about contributing okay and and through increasing your skill level you will be contributing so it's not like a you know communistic you know everybody one for one you know all for one one for all no you increase your skills you will make more money and you will be serving the public at the same time right you're serving your fellow man okay so don't worry about that all right just educate yourself okay and of course you know i'm not talking about colleges and universities but <laughs> Read, all right? There's a lot of free information out there. Use it, all right? 
So with that, I'm going to uh, sign off. This is um, Peaceful Anarchism on the Voluntary Virtues Network. And this is Danilo Cuellar, your host, signing off. Hope you have a wonderful day.